Right, good afternoon to everybody and um, happy Monday. I um, hope you had a good weekend. Right, so, as you know, this is the fifth, our fifth session, fifth session of Agile Testing and Automation. And um, you're all welcome to this session. Um, we, the, it's, it's, obviously the third part of our fundamental test activities. And uh, as, as I do, um, but the good news is today is the last day of uh, talking about kind of last day of laying the foundation for um, testing. So we, we in the past few weeks, we've been talking about some of the fundamental activities uh, in testing, traditional testing. And last week we did look at, last week we looked at, uh, the second part of fundamental uh, fundamentals is that fundamental testing fundamentals of testing and um, in which we looked at traceability metrics um, test analysis test design and test implementation last week right today we will be by popular request, we'll be looking at risk-based testing before we carry on with the other activity, which is test execution and um, test completion. Okay, right. I want to get rid of you guys here. Um, it, it, risk itself, <clears throat> risk itself is the possibility of a negative or undesirable outcome or event. Um, I've got this here to say project success. So um, whenever the impact of a risk um, relates to the project, uh, the project or wh whenever a risk impacts the success of the project in a negative way, um, it is called a project's risk or planning risk. But then when the impact um, affects the product quality, it is treated as a quality risk or product risk or product quality risk. And testing is usually used as a mitigating um, activity, right? Risk-based testing itself, what is it? Risk-based risk, risk testing. ISTQB defines it as testing in which the management, selection, um, prioritization, and use of testing activities and resources are based on corresponding risk types and risk levels. And we'll, it'll, it'll make sense as I go along. Testing, uh, risk-based testing itself has a few tasks or, you know, um, it includes a few tasks that we want to talk about. The first one is identification of risk. So uh, uh, when the risk is identified, or at this stage, it, is, it involves, um, you know, collecting or putting together pertinent risks, okay? And then um, when the risks are identified or gathered, the risk assessment team or risk management team will, a risk analysis team or risk uh, management team will assess the team that is steady the, steady the um, risk that has been raised, um, look at the likelihood of the impact based on um, how, how severely it affects business, um, yeah, the business itself in terms of um, for instance, you'd be looking at the, uh, um, negative impacts like death, loss of business, and stuff like that. Okay, so we study the the risk here that has been identified, um, categorize it, uh, put them into different risk levels, and then the next thing that is done is mitigated, or a mitigation action plan is put in place um, here. In this at this stage, testing will attempt to write some or based on the test strategy uh, document, testing will attempt to 
look at some test cases or test techniques that will be used that are put in place. Um, what it, depending on what the test plan says, testing will implement some, um, you know, mitigating activities or tasks or perform certain things. Like I said, based on the tech, it could be a testing technique. Um, it could be, let's have some um, unit test in place or let's have some integration test in place. Let's have regression test in place to mitigate those risks that have been picked up. Okay. Let me see. Testing uses risk analysis. So to sum all that up, testing will typically use the risk analysis results to determine the test techniques to be employed. So I want to remind us that risk-based testing is an approach in itself. And in that approach, testing will normally determine test techniques that will be employed. I mentioned some of the test techniques. It could be a unit test. Um, not every team you, or dev team uses unit testing. So that could be a technique. The team could also determine the levels and types of testing to be performed. Uh, they may also determine the extent of testing to be carried out, how much testing. Um, they might also decide to prioritize testing to find critical defects as early as possible. Um, it's important, I said this before, it's important that testing is engaged early. Uh, so review stage, um, uh, design stage, you want to bring testing in. Um, so at this stage, we may decide as part of risk analysis to prioritize some of these testing in order to, crit uh, to find critical defects as early as possible. Um, the results also, risk analysis results also determines whether any activities in addition to testing could be employed to reduce the risk. For instance, do we need to provide training for developers or inexperienced designers? Um, and I've got an exercise here for us, a very short and quick one. I, I don't know if I can see, okay, yeah. So I think I brought this up a few, day, uh, a few weeks ago. We've got this business requirements here um, allow registered users to log into the system with their username and password. Looking at this, what is the worst that you could think of if you could put in the chat? Uh, can you think of any risks that can affect testing here? If you were to be testing this, just think of the worst that could happen that could uh, adversely or negatively impact testing. And consequently, you know, the, the, the quality of the product. I've got one. So if you could just put it in the charts for us. System not available, yeah. Got that twice. What, what is the worst that you think could happen? <laughs> I've got system, okay. System not available. Come on. What is the worst that could happen that could adversely affect um, the product itself or product quality, development? Oh, I've only got one, one suggestion so far. How many are we in here? I could do with about five. Multiple usernames issued, okay. Password strength not specified, yeah. So these are all risks. Come on, what, 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 what are some of the, I want more. Invalid username and password, okay. I could do with two more and then I'll move on. Please. Invalid, okay, cool. Thanks, thanks guys. Um, so I've got, they, they're all good worst case scenarios. I've got here one of the potential problems believe it or not, could be um, testing has no access to database, hence no way of validating 
um, data. So if something like this is raised, I mean, this, this kind of could be a showstopper. Um, so this is kind of a high risk. I don't know if you would agree with me. If testing has no access to the database or has no access to data to validate the, 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 the registered user, there's no way that we can execute or get a pass or fail for any of these. Uh, but yes, I'm, the, the suggestions that you all gave were, were, were accurate as well. They were all acceptable. But in terms of high priority, so if we were to say the impact on, um, uh, on the product quality in terms of like, you know, how it will affect the, the customer or user, the impact ultimately, if the worst case is one, and um, a mid, uh, uh, an okayish, acceptable case is five. The severity will be um, a sev one risk in this case. Okay, I will move on for the sake of time. Two, some of the test activities that we mentioned uh, earlier on. We've talked about test planning, monitoring and control, test analysis, test um, design. Um, and the lot. Um, these are the last two test execution. Test ex execution is the activity that runs a test on a component producing actual result. And at this stage of testing, um, the activities that it involves includes running manual test cases, um, including exploratory testing. So. Basically, at test execution cases, we run manual test cases, um, including exploratory testing. Uh, we also execute automated tests at this stage, comparing um, actual results with expected results. It's important that I mentioned that. So I said before that usually people assume or think test execution or testing is all about test execution. But as I'll repeat this again, the Test execution is just one of the stages or one of the activities in testing. And at this stage, we also analyze anomalies um, to establish their causes. Um, I've got an example here, break in network com uh, connection. So if there's a break in network com connection, this may not necessarily be a bug, okay? This may not, it, it, it is an issue, um, but it is something that does not directly have, have anything to do with the product itself. Uh, so we would normally analyze it in test execution stage. Um, reporting defects as well, based on failures observed. Uh, we would log the outcome of the test execution that is pass, fail, block, et cetera, and then update traceability between the test basis and software to consider test results. And then finally, we will also execute regression test in this stage. All this happens in test execution stage. Right, the last one, which is test completion, the last of the main testing activities, test execution. Now this activity, this is the activity that makes testware available. By testware, we mean test plan, test, um, test cases, et cetera, test scripts. This activity makes the test where available for later use and leaves test environments in a satisfactory condition and communicates the results of testing to relevant stakeholders. So the second part I had to underline, communicate the results to stakeholders because this is what almost any stakeholder will be interested in. Um, the, the leaving the test environment in a satisfactory con condition, not many people are usually interested in that, but it is a very important part of testing um, or test completion stage. So later on, I will show you an example of a test completion report. Right, this activity includes, or this includes the following activities. Checking whether all defects re defect reports are closed. At this stage, we also want to enter change requests. 
and we create test summary reports or test exit reports, as some may call it. Um, we finalize and archive test environments, test data, <clears throat> and test infrastructure and other test way. A lot of testers watching, listening to me right now may think, really, does this happen? Yes, this is a test management task, and it's it's important that this is done because you want to make sure if it's an agile, um, uh, uh, if if it's an agile team, you want to make sure that the next the environment is ready for the next sprint. Okay. Um, we hand over test where to maintenance team and other project teams or stakeholders who may need them. So for instance, you're using a tool um, which is licensed, okay? Other teams may use it or even environment. Sometimes you share environment with other teams. So we at this point hand over to uh, whichever stakeholder needs them. And then we also in test completion stage analyze lessons learned from the completed test activities. Sometimes the team is not allowed the time to do this. Um, this is, again, most of these are management activities, but if you're the only test analyst, you want to analyze lessons learned from, com um, from the completed test activities. And of course, management and the project manager might wanna do that as well. It's quite important. And then using the information gathered here, to improve test process maturity. Again, um, people might not be interested in it, but you wanna push for this. <clears throat> As I said, I have an example. Oh, I've got some sample test exit criteria here. Um, so test completion has to be based on a certain criteria. Right, and I'll explain this in a minute. Um, an example is there should be no store shop, uh, show stoppers or critical defects. This this exit criteria is set in the in the um, test plan. Okay, uh, Urim asked a que question a few weeks ago, and um, I did say that in your test completion report, you want the testers or the tech project team or stakeholders should be interested in um, test exit criteria. Um, and these are some of the examples. There should be no showstoppers or critical defects. Let's just say the example that of um, uh, risk that we raised, if a test case is written for that and that test case fails, because one of the things we do in mitigating risks is write test cases, Etc. cetera, um, to take care of it, right? If that test case fails, that will be a showstopper, okay? So as a test analyst, at this, my report should tell us that we, we testing is not completed because there's a showstopping bug. And um, another example is specified um, coverage in the complete, in the reports, you have to specify coverage, co bleh, beg your pardon, the specified coverage <laughs> has to be ar archived. And then, um, yeah, you, you have to specify that there are few medium or, you have to agree that there are few medium or low severity defects that uh, don't affect the usage, usage of the product. So the team can agree that, yeah, we can pass this into production with these low severity bugs. An example here of a test, complete, uh, test completion or test exit report. You can see here in the executive summary, in the executive summary, you can see um, the 99% clearly stated 99% of test execution is completed with 99, 99.5 test execution completed with 99 pass rate. And you can see some, you know, text written there. People will be asking questions from this report, stakeholders want to know, oh, um, how come we've got three blocked uh, bugs? Um, a good test exit report should have more to explain what happened. So stakeholders will ask these questions. Um, why do we have blocked bugs? Um, there are five failed ones, what's happened to them? 
and then they'll probably come to the end and say, oh yeah, there's 0.6. We, questions will be asked here. Um, but then at least for a test analyst, when you give a good report, uh, which answers some of these questions, you save yourself a lot of hassle. Um, so yeah, that brings me to the end of the session. Um, I will allow qu questions to be asked at this stage. Before even that, the next time we come back, I will be going straight. Uh, uh, I have to rush a lot of stuff in this first five sessions because I think the, the intention of this whole series is agile um, automation testing. So I will go back to some of them in when we actually start agile testing. So next week, I will be starting with introduction to agile testing. We focus on differences between traditional and um, agile testing. Thank you. Time for feedback, questions, and answers. Okay. Hi, Eric. Hello. Yeah, thanks, man, for this session. Just a quick one, man. You know, in the sample test exit criteria, yeah, the last point you made that there are a few sort of uh, medium or low security defects that don't affect the usage of the product, yeah? Is, is it is it on number the... three? Yeah, number, number three, three. Yeah. 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 Is yeah. that something similar to an MVP? Um I won't, I, I'm not sure if I can say that, no. Okay. So what, what, what this is, is that you've probably specified in your test plan that these will be my exit criteria. So this stuff I've got here is examples of, let's just say we've got five test cases, okay? And um, one, there's, there's one low priority bug that, that filled. You can decide as part of your exit in your test plan, which I said from the beginning that the test plan is like the tester's contract with the project or with, with, with the business. So you said there that um, one of my exit criteria is that few medium or low uh, severity defects. If we have low severity defects, we're happy for the, the, the product to go live because we agree that these are low priority. Do, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, I was... so, so, so when it comes to test completion and there are one or two low severity plans, I mean, the test passes or the product can go live. If there's a high severity one, because of the number one, I, as a test analyst, will be the first to say that project manager, I'm sorry, but we're not ready to go live. And um, testers should on the basis of this exit criteria that was in the test plan that was signed off by everyone, should be able to say, no, we're not going live. And yeah, then you, that, the project manager, can make a call on that. Yeah, that's like, that's something similar to like quality assurance that it must be this minimum level. Yeah. Yeah, minimum level. Yeah. If, yeah. If, if it passes this benchmark, this minimum level, it can go, right. if not, it cannot. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, so so the exit criteria is, it, it just tells you the list of things that, again, this is my my contract for exiting the project. On the basis of these, I'm happy to either go live or not. Who determines this? This is the test analyst who comes up with this, but then well, test plans, or test strategies are signed off by everybody, including the project manager. So once it's signed off and you agree that you, you agree to this, then yeah, um, uh, it, it becomes, you know, a contract. But the test analyst writes this, the project manager will look at it and say, I'm happy with this. The product owner might also definitely, I'm sure the product owner will also be in, interested in this the business might be interested in it the ba might be interested in this okay all right thanks very much you're welcome
any more for anyone, please. Any feedbacks, questions? Hello, Eric. Hello, William. So you showed us um, the sample test criteria, uh, which is shown at the end of each, is it at the end of each project or at the end of each sprint? When is that? This the test, test exit, exit criteria. No, no. Th this test exit criteria is defined in the test plan. Mm. So at the in test exit report, uh, 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 test completion stage, yeah. you as a test analyst, analyst want to make sure that we've satisfied all this criteria. And for the report you showed, when does the team have a look at it? Is it at the end of the sprint? Or, yeah, the report before. The at, at the end of the testing cycle. Okay. Or, or development cycle. Could it be so, at the end of a sprint? Oh, or yeah. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. If, if it's an agile team at the end of the sprint, if it's waterfall at the end of the entire project. Okay. So, so uh, uh, one of the projects that I worked on in the past, at the, at the end of the sprints, they will ask for something simple like this. Mm -hmm. This is actually a simplified version. If it's, um, if it's, yeah, different stakeholders might ask for more. They might ask for um, explanation of the, you know, the, the block section, the five, you know, any outstanding failures, any outstanding bugs, etc. cetera. The, people could ask for more stuff. But this is a simplified version of a, of a test completion report. All right, all right. Uh, thank you so much and uh, very insightful uh, for thank the teams you. I am working with. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody with any more questions? Okay. Eric, I'm sorry. It, yes. This is so. I mean, as as a BA in this in this pro process, um, what would a BA be looking out for in 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 um, in this process, for instance, the in the, the test exit exact, exactly T test completion yes, report exactly so the BA. Oh, where is it? Come on, you're moving too fast. So mm -hmm. BA. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm trying to bring that report back. Yeah. A BA will probably be looking at test. Uh, uh, will be looking at coverage or even the functionality side. Make sure that all the pages that you that went into the sprint are there. All, all the areas. So you'll be looking at coverage and okay. um, you'll probably be interested in the reports, mm. uh, uh, the, the failures um, and the blocked ones because I suppose the BA, you also answer, you answer to the business, you represent the mm. business. You, you do want to see what is blocked uh, so okay. that you can go back to your stakeholders and say, well, um, we've got a few outstanding, you know, some of the stuff that you requested for, mm. Are not coming in mm. for this or that reason. Yeah. So yeah, oh, yeah. BA, yeah, BA will be interested. So in average. Uh, obviously, the BA will be one of the people asking for explanation for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 and and depending and, and again, when we go to, into the agile side of things, we we we'll yeah. look we'll look at it from a different perspective. This is to lay foundation, but you realize mm. that in an agile team. Agile has certain things that make it easy for this communication to be, you know, done way ahead of time. Okay. Um, yeah, you, you, you will find that in Agile. But just a reminder that this is all um, about activities that testing performs mm. um, from a traditional testing perspective. Okay, thank you. They, 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 it was necessary I do this because, so that fewer questions will be asked when we go into the agile and automation side of things. Okay. So you're giving me three minutes back and I, yeah, I think I, I'm, it's fair that if there's not any question, no further questions, I'll give that back to you as well. So thank you so much for joining us today as well. And um, look forward to um, moving into the next stage of the part that most of us have been looking forward to, agile testing. So see you same time next week. Um, William, do you want to 
just announce what we've got coming up next week or okay or, yeah tomorrow yep can you hear me eric yes i can all right thank you so much eric uh, for such insightful sessions i know it builds the background for us to go into agile testing and the wait has been uh, very long but still worthwhile and uh, we always want to say a big thank you for all your hard work and putting this together tomorrow we've got um a spotlight on the skilled agile framework we've got question time it would just not be talking 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 we've got question time and it's based on a question that was asked in one of my sessions and i've managed to beg um lead with a very good friend who's been uh, working on a skilled agile project in Germany to join us. He's Cyril Aware and he will be joining us for a question time. Uh, we'll have Carlos asking us a few questions and you can also bring your questions. And we want to make sure that the questions you bring in, uh, we are able to ask, answer them based on what's happening in your real life environment. So tomorrow will be a good question time. Please do join us and have your questions ready. And it's all about a spotlight on the skilled agile framework. Happily, and the good news is we've got Shelly Thompson joining us from the 8th of October. And she's covering coaching. Everyone needs a coach. Everyone needs a mentor, but she's going to be covering coaching and how everyone can learn the skills and the knowledge of coaching. So from the 8th of October, which will be next week, we've got Shirley covering coaching. And then, as you always know, we've got uh, Data is Keen on Fridays with Carlos. Do join us on such sessions. Again, Eric, it's always a pleasure being with you. And thank you so much for your sessions. Everyone, let's have a wonderful day. And thank you for joining Eric's session. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Thank you.